Yeah, hi, my name is Bo Quan Zheng. Today I'm going to talk about a stochastic dynamics model with the potential energy landscape, which can predict the beam obstacle traversal. As we all know, the animals are good at uh, traversing various obstacles. Our pre study of the crocodiles shows when they meet grass like obstacles, there will be different transitions during locomotions. And the potential energy landscape could be a good tool to understand the motion. And our lab has more recent funding on this topic, and you may refer to the next two talks from Chi uh, Han uh, Our lab has created a bio-inspired robot to study this problem. This robot is good to study the transition in body orientations, but there is still a few limitations. This robot is quasi static as there's no self-proposal force and dynamic interaction. And adding dynamics is not easier for, for a 3D model. So here we started with a simplified 2D model with a horizontal beams. The body shape is also simplified to a circle with forward self-proposal force and lateral random force. To make things easier, there's also no friction. The lateral random force is actually inspired from the lateral lag spin model of the cockroach. There's always some noise and disturbance in the lags. An animal study shows the randomness often benefits the locomotion. So we are curious about the randomness in our model. Uh, uh, in the simulation, I generated the random force from the normal distribution and oscillated at 15 hertz, basically using a constant magnitude times a Gaussian random number and it will behave like this. So here we have some questions. The first one is how to model the interaction dynamics in my simulation. First, we developed the, the collection approach. The basic idea is if you jump, jump the ball, it will collect with the ground and keep bouncing. In fact, you can imagine there will be infinite tiny collections and we'll see, but you'll see it just continuous contact. Based on this, I implemented a program to apply the conservation of momentum to simulate the collisions between the body and beams. The energy is not conserved because I consider there will be some energy loss. So it is not perfectly elastic collision. I can also control the collision elasticity by using a parameter called the coefficient of restitution. It is defined by the relative speed change after one collision. The collision method works well in some cases when the body travels so successfully, but when it is stuck, the collisions keep dissipating energy and eventually the body and beams reach the same normal velocity. Then the tiny, tiny collision set will be too small to be captured by the numerical time step. So in the simulation, some collisions are missing and the numerical error could go really high. So to, to deal with this problem, I try to solve the continuous dynamics by serving the system with geometry constraint and Newton's second law. I use the velocity constraint that the contact points uh, have the same normal velocity. By using these equations, I can directly solve the interaction forces. This method is good and accurate, but it only works on the continuous contacts. And I still need to add some collisions in the beginning. Maybe it is a good idea to combine both methods. So here is a flow chart shows how my simulation program works. So first the program will enter in the collection method loop, but I will keep, I keep eyes on the change of the relative momentum after each collection. If this, this value is small enough, which means the contact is continuous, it will break to the next loop of the constraint method into detachment. So here are two example animation of my simulation results. This one is the traversal successfully, and this one, the body is being stuck by the beams. Okay, and, and here comes another question that when and how will the traversal succeed? And what is the effect of the randomness? Here we also set up the potential energy landscape as a tool to analyze the system. The potential energy comes from the elastic joints of the beam. In order to traverse, the body needs to push forward and find the beam, which results in the energy barrier on the landscape. And you can see two barriers overlap in the middle area. In this problem of the traversal, the energy landscape 
may give us some ideas. Here is a hypothesis that uh, a larger self-proposal force and general force, there will be more kinetic energy in the system and the uh, traversal can be easier. So I test this hypothesis by using a symmetric landscape, which means the stiffness on each side are the same. And this, that is what I got after the test. This is the probability table. On the axis, axis I increased the proposal force, and of course the, the probability is also increased. On the y-axis is the random force magnitude. We can find that an increased random force can be helpful, but not a too large one. On the large random force, for example, this one, the body is deviated from the desired track earlier. In the natural environment, the obstacles are rarely symmetric. So on this model, we also want to find out the effect of the asymmetry. By setting different stiffness, we can get energy barriers with different height. From the landscape, we can guess the body is more likely to take a pass on the lower energy barrier side. To test this hypothesis, I compare the trajectory distribution in the asymmetric test with the symmetric one. So, so here in this test, the left beam stiffness is said to be lower than the right beam. And you can see the overall traversal probability is increased. And notice that the increased part of the probability mostly come from the left trails, while the number of the right trails almost unchanged. The behavior on the landscape also supports our hypothesis. Here on the symmetric test, the, the traversal is restricted by the energy barrier. But on the asymmetric test, as the left side energy barrier reduced, the left trail will be have more chance to pass. And besides simulation, I also try to build a real robot to try this idea. This is simply made by a tall hovercraft and an air table to reduce the friction and an oscillator to provide a random force. And the experiment shows a similar behavior like the simulation. Okay, finally, based on our understanding of one pair of beam, we can extend it to a larger terrain with multiple obstacles. Uh, here's a one terrain of a gate matrix. There are nine by nine gates, and each gate has a pair of beams with symmetric stiffness, just like our single simulation showed, showed before. And stiffened gate can have different stiffness. And we want to test on this field to see how the robot can navigate themselves to the exist. Here's another example of a field with random stiffness of each gate. So the color means the stiffness of the, the, the beam. Uh, uh, so what? Two minutes. Oh, OK. Sorry. So, uh, if there is no round of force, the body will be stuck at this gate where the, where the has a lot of resistance. But with the help of the random force, the, the body may navigate to an easier gate to traverse. OK, here are my conclusions. The increased self proposal force can increase the traversal probability, and random force can help the traversal when it is sufficient but not too large. For asymmetric beam obstacles, the less stiffer side has more probability to traversal. And the potential energy landscape is a useful tool to study the beam traversal process. And thanks to the help of other PhD students in our lab. Thank you for listening. All right, thanks very much. Uh, a minute ahead of schedule. So any questions? Um, so maybe just a quick one from me. So do you, uh, going back to this idea of the randomness that you imposed, um, do you have any idea of how in real biological systems, um, how that magnitude of the random contribution compares with say the proportion? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Actually, I, I 
I didn't have some data from the biological system, so I, I don't know the match between the random force and the proportional force. So I I chose the magnitude by uh by telling from the, the behavior in the simulation. Okay. Okay. And just to just to add on that, so so Bokman would would uh, would mean on this project. So yeah, so we we haven't quantified the randomness in in uh, obstacle traversal in these animals, but just visually looking at the video, it is very clear that they are far from doing the very rhythmic like, like limit cycle like behavior during run walking or running on flat surfaces. So yeah, so the so that's what, what where we had our kind of hypothesis to study this. But yet, if we want to use this to understand the animals, we we should quantify that. Okay. Do you have a sense of whether that randomness comes from um, the the frequency or maybe the shape, the gait, if you like? Um. So yeah. So the, I, I I think it's uh, actually in in the, in the in, not the next talk, but the talk after you see some videos of the animal traversing the beams and they're really doing this, like, seems like active adjustment that deviates significantly away from, from just cyclic pushing. Yeah. So, so, I, so I think it's, it's, they're likely changing the coordination between their, their legs, as well as also using like joints on their body. Right. Okay, thank All right. You. Thanks very much. Thank you. We should.